Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial for M Crater. So today what we're going to be covering is how to make custom buckets and I know it's been a long time since it's been suggested and it's taken me this long to actually figure it out. So today what we're going to do is dive into how the script works and some the only really main thing that is wrong with it. So Let's uh, get started, and I'm going to set my game mode to survival. Uh, it will act as normal if you were in creative, so it doesn't fill the butt bucket up automatically if you're in creative. That's why I'm going into survival. So if we go into survival, uh, game mode, survival, uh, then we can basically fill up our buckets. So as you can see, it will give us a oak water bucket. This is just a regular oak bucket. And there is a minor thing that can happen. Let's see if I can get the uh, thing to work. Sometimes it will double up on the um, what do you call it, the amount of buckets, or the amount of blocks that it's replacing, so it's not doing it right now, but sometimes because of the way it's set up, it will actually do that, which is unfortunate, but there isn't really a way around that currently, or at least not one that I can figure out. So placing the bucket of water also works the same way, uh, it's based on the block face that you're placing it on. So if we just fill this up entirely, we can get a full body of water like you would with a regular bucket. And uh, again, like I said before, uh, there is a, a minor bug where if you were to stand in the right place and then try right clicking on one of the surfaces, sometimes it does a double... Um, double pickup of water which is just due to the ray tracing. So let's go into mCreator and I'll show you how it all works. Alright, so we have two procedures and two items and oddly enough they're both right click events. So what we're going to do is look at the items themselves first and then we'll look at the procedures. So let's look at the empty bucket first. We have the empty bucket texture and then we have just basic settings here. Uh, I, for a regular bucket, I think they can only stack up to 16. So you might want to change the max stack size to 16. And the inventory, I have that disabled. Uh, the triggers I have for the empty bucket for uh, when right clicked in air and when right clicked on block. Now this is the same procedure as the other one. So it's these ones are two the one these two are linked together so it doesn't matter if you make them separate or whatever it's just it you can basically link them together because it has the same dependencies so we'll cover that in just a second and then there is the oak water bucket just a textured version of a water bucket i only have the stack size to one and the no inventory and we also have a right clicked event, but this one has a couple of extra dependencies. It has X, Y, and Z and direction, and that can only be supported by the when right clicked on block, which is the only thing that we really actually need it for. So that's basically that. Let's go into the empty oak bucket script, which is this one right here. And we'll take a look at the code and it looks a lot like, like there is a lot of stuff to cover, but it's really pretty simple stuff. Um, it's actually amazing that it's, it's taken me a whole year to figure it out. All right, so what's happening here is what we're doing is we're testing if the entity has in the main hand a empty water bucket. And then what we're going to do is set a local variable. So if I expand this, uh, there's a local variable, which is called local ray trace distance which is this one right here and I've set this to 0 0.5 because the maximum um, distance for a player to actually 
break a block is 4.5, so we actually have to increase this number a little bit. All right, so what we're doing is we're repeating this process, which is anything inside the green. So we're repeating that five times, which will equal out to four times it's been run. So for example, this is going to be zero at this coordinate first. So it's going to test for 0 0.5 away from the player for the ray tracing distance, which is also used for the ray tracing distance, uh, actual distance, which is this variable right here. We've assigned the local variable to the distance for the ray tracing. So if it's 0 0.5 from that, then what we're going to do is we're going to um, run the script, but if it isn't, then what we're going to do is basically increase the number by one, and that will repeat five times, which will equal out to four. So that's basically what that's the repeater is doing. So inside this script here, what we're doing is we're testing if there is a fluid source. So if there's a fluid source equal to true at the block location, we're also for the block location, we're getting the fluid fluid as block at. And then we're for the coordinates, what we're doing is we're getting the ray tracing uh, of the provided entity. So the player that's placing the block or right clicking on the block. And then what we're doing is we're basically getting the distance of what we've basically set. So the first one will be 0 0.5, 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, and then 4.5. Uh, for the ray tracing distance. So that's basically what's going on there. But we're also testing for other things as well in this condition. We're testing if there is a water source of a liquid water source. So get fluid as block at, and then we're testing for the ray tracing distance. And then we're going to be testing for all the different types of variants of water source for that type of um, fluid source that you want to basically increase. So for example, I've just set it up so it would work with water. So I have flowing water, uh, stationary water, and bubble water. And then if this is this condition is true, then what we're going to do is run inside the script. So inside the script, what we're doing is we're swinging the main hand of the provided entity, and then we're removing the block at the ray tracing location. Uh, this is important because if we were to do X, Y, and Z, then it would be re removing the block that we're right clicking on, and that's not what we want to do. We want to actually remove the block that's in front of where we're looking. So this is where the ray tracing comes in. It actually draws a line kind of where we're looking, and the first block, because of the repeater, it's going to detect if there's a, a water source there of the water and it's going to remove that. So if after it's removed for the block, then what it's doing is it's getting the running on the server side. So if it's not on the client side and then we're just play, uh, running a sound for uh, item bucket filled and this will just play the sound. If it's not run on the server side, then it will run twice and it sounds awkward. So that's why it has to be run on the server side. And then lastly, what we're doing is we're testing if the entity is not in creative. And then what we're doing is we're setting the main hand of the provided entity if they are in survival or any other game mode. And we're going to get the uh, number of items in the main hand and then we're subtracting that by one. So, and then we're setting it to an empty bucket. Or setting it to an empty bucket, yeah. So, so yeah, basically what this part right here is doing is if the item in their main hand, again, is the empty bucket, then what we're doing is we're basically just subtracting one from that stack. And then what we're doing is we're going to test if the main hand of the provided NTT is air. If that's true, then what we're going to do is we're going to set the main hand of the provided entity to a water bucket of that same variant. And then if it's false, then if it, it's like has a item in that particular slot or it's another bucket still, 
then what we're going to do is just create an else statement and then run basically add a, a water bucket to the player's inventory and then lastly after we've run this particular script for our condition this one right here then what we're going to do is break out of the loop so it doesn't continue re repeating and removing blocks at the line of ray tracing that we've basically set up and if it's uh, this script doesn't run then it's just going to increase the number for the ray tracing until it does find a water source or it runs out of times to repeat so that's basically how that works I'm not going to actually go ahead and build this from scratch uh, all my procedures and stuff are on my website as well as this one so you guys can download that if you want to it's all set up ready to go for you guys so I'll make sure to provide the link for that. And the other one is for the oak water bucket when I right clicked on block. Now this one is a little bit long. Um, most of it is just really repetitive because of the direction. It could probably be broken up into separate parts to basically make it a little bit more uh, performance better <laughs> to make the performance better but uh, as you can see there's a lot of script that's repetitive we have the condition for west we have the condition for south east north up and down so we have to have all those for each one of those um, running on a if else statement like this so I'll cover the first one and then I can basically uh, you guys can understand the rest because it's set up the exact same way it's just on a larger else statement so what's happening is we're going to test now this is for the filled water bucket again so what we're going to do is we're going to test for two things uh, the first thing that we're going to test for is we're going to test if the trigger uh, direction slash face is facing the direction that we're basically right clicking on the block with so if we're right clicking on the top surface, then it's going to run this script right here. If we're right clicking on the bottom of the block, then it's going to run this script right here. And it does that for every side. So the coordinates are actually really important the way that they're set up. If they're not set up this way, then it's going to run into a whole bunch of placing problems and other issues. So it's best to just um, run the script like that. I'll break this into a couple smaller parts because even for me, this procedure is actually running really slow when on startup. So I can only imagine if it, how it will react to some uh, less powerful computers. So I'll break these parts up into their own procedures and then you can just basically go to advanced and then call procedure at, and then you can basically just call this um, call the uh, second procedure through these and just select the procedure that you want. All right, I'll show you how to do that in just a sec. So basically what's happening is we're going to test for the direction and then what we're going to do is we're going to get the block at and then we're going to test for the coordinates of that block and we're going to get either water, any of the water sources of the same basically uh, bucket source or if it's air or cave air. And if that's true, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna swing the main hand of the provided entity, place the source water source that we basically want to place from our bucket. And then what we're going to do is run a sound, a random sound based on the server side. So uh, the random sound is basically anything greater than five. We're going to run it at a higher pitch and or pardon me, a higher, yeah, higher pitch. And then if it's less than equal to or less than 0 0.5, or that should be 0 0.5. Uh, if it's equal to or less than 0 0.5, then what it's going to do is run the sound that's at 0 0.9 pitch. So I'll fix up the, the fives in a little bit. After which it's going to test if the player is not in creative. If they're not in creative, then it's going to remove the main hand of the provided entity. 
and then it's going to set the main hand of the provided entity to a empty water or empty bucket. And that's all that's basically going on here is it's just doing that a whole bunch of times and setting it up so it's basically running and placing the blocks according to the coordinates that it needs to be. So I will again break all these little sections up here and then just basically add a call block like this and then you guys can just link up your minor procedures for these things right here. Again you just click on that and then select the uh, procedure that you want to run this script from and then it will be a little bit easier on performance for you guys. So outside of that, that's basically all there is to the bucket. Uh, it's really simple when it comes down to it. I'm surprised it took me a year to figure out, but I had a lot of other projects that I had to work on too. So um, it doesn't really surprise me too much. But if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. I will leave the link to the project page on my website for this where you can go and download the actual files for the workspace, the procedures and resources for the actual project. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.